Total Blocking Time is a website performance metric that's reported on PageSpeed Insights and contributes to the Lighthouse performance score. Let's take a look at what the total blocking time measures and why it matters to user experience. Total blocking time measures how long the browser main thread is blocked and therefore unable to handle user interactions. I built a simple example page and when I reload the page and then click on the click me button, you can see that for about a second, nothing happens at all. And that's because there's a background task running on the page as it's loading. Because the browser main thread is blocked, that means that my interaction can't be handled until the previous task has been completed. Not every CPU task is considered blocking. Only tasks longer than 50 milliseconds contribute to the total blocking time metric. The first 50 seconds don't contribute. So if you have an 80 millisecond CPU task, the total blocking time contribution will be just 30 milliseconds. It's also worth considering that long CPU tasks during the page load don't contribute to blocking time if they happen before the first contentful paint or after the time to interactive milestone. On this page, we have a 2000 millisecond CPU task that runs when the page loads. If I test it with PageSpeed Insights, you can see that the total blocking time is 1950 milliseconds. So 2000 milliseconds, but the first 50 milliseconds don't contribute to the total blocking time metric. I can also look at the mobile reporting, and here we can see less total blocking time, but that is just an issue with the lighter simulation and just not an accurate value. If we look at a debug based B test result, we can see the total blocking time value here, and we can see that we have a 2000 millisecond CPU task that runs after the page has rendered. We can use Chrome's developer tools to measure what CPU tasks block the main thread. I can open the dev tools, I go into the performance panel, and then I reload the page by clicking on this button, and I click on this page, and I click on the button. And then we can look at the profile that Chrome has recorded. Uh, and we can see that we have a long task here, all this like red shaded area, this is the blocking time. We can see the interaction while the page is loading uh, with a lot of input delay. And then we can also look at the actual source code that's kind of causing this delay. This is just a simplified example, but we can also look at a real world example where there's a lot more stuff going on and the call stack is a lot deeper and it's a bit harder to debug. But again, this kind of can tell you what is delaying interactions on your website and causing the main thread to be blocked. If visitors interact with your page while the main thread is blocked, that means their interaction is going to be delayed. As a result, you can get a poor score on the interaction next paint metric, which is one of the three core web vitals that Google uses as a ranking signal. If you load this example interaction into Debug Bear, we can see that there is a large input delay component. Input delay tells you that there is a background task that takes up a lot of time, and it's not really handling the interaction itself that's causing the problem. In this case, we can instead see that when the interaction happened, there was a set timeout handler already running, and that caused the delay. You can use debug bear synthetic monitoring to monitor the total blocking time metric. And you can use debug bear real user monitoring to see how CPU tasks on your website delay user interactions and cause poor interaction next pain scores.